Hey YouTube, I'm Lucky and today I'm going to bring you a build that I'm going to call the carry build for Trials of Osiris. Now, what this is, is if you are out there and you're trying to win a raffle in my stream or really in anyone's streams for that matter, and you want to help the streamers or YouTubers or whoever they may be, you want to help them as much as you possibly can because you know that you rarely play Crucible or when you do play Crucible, you don't do very well, you don't perform very well, and you know that you're going to be a very, very tough carry. Do your best to try to emulate this build and you will be helping those that are trying to help you as much as possible. Trust me when I say this, as someone who has played thousands of hours of trials, this is without a doubt the best build that you can create. The first thing I'm gonna start off by saying is that there's three classes in the game. Obviously you've got Titan, Hunter, and Warlock. Now Hunter and Warlock do have some really strong builds that you can use for helping your teammates, but overall the best class without a doubt is Titan for the complete support role that is. For just being completely there to help others and not trying to get a ton of kills, not trying to slay out. You're just there as a support role. You're trying to help your teammates as much as possible. And I'm going to explain why Titan is by far the best. In fact, Hunter and Warlock can't even compare to Titan because it's so much better in the support role, especially when using the bubble subclass. So the first thing that I'm going to cover is that the Titan wall is without a doubt the best class ability when it comes to the support role within Trials of Osiris because revives are so incredibly important if you can get a revive you can shift the momentum of a game in an instant because as i've covered many many times before i think it's like 80 or 90 percent of matches are won by the first pick so each round in trials there's three versus three and wh whichever team gets the first pick that team tends to win like 80 or 90 percent of the time it's a very very high statistic i've measured it before in watching previous games or watching previous cards and it's really really high obviously it can depend on the team but it's really, really high statistic. If you get the first pick, you will win the match. But with the towering barricade, you can shift that momentum the complete opposite because by putting this wall on the body, you are able to very easily get a revive when ordinarily you would not be able to get that revive because most good enemy teams are going to be watching the revive after they've gotten the kill. They're gonna be throwing grenades on it. They're gonna be keeping their lines of sight on it, etc., etc. But the towering barricade is so strong, you'll actually have time if the timer is up, if you, you know, put the Titan Barricade on it and start getting the res, you'll often have time to get the res before they're able to shoot the wall down or throw enough grenades at it, etc. The Hunter Dodge is really strong, especially if you go Invis, that can work too, but it's definitely not as helpful as the Titan Barricade. A Healing Rift is always really strong on Warlock, but not as good as the Titan Barricade. Trust me when I say this, the best class ability for being a support class role and trying to get carried in Trials is the Titan Barricade. And then on to the next part. We actually have a suppressor grenade. Now this is the strongest support class grenade in the game because if an enemy gets their super, especially the way people play lately in trials, they often will three peak and run really high intellect. And they're essentially trying to win rounds and win games by just running you over with supers and dropping orbs and then their teammates pick up the orbs, etc., etc. They go back to three peaking and hiding. The suppressor grenade changes all of that. All you have to do is just wait for the enemy supers to get kind of close to you, throw a suppressor grenade at your own feet or just down the hallway, etc. And you can shut down a super which took minutes to acquire you can shut it down in an instant such a strong grenade now obviously this takes some strategy this takes some timing you may whiff a suppressor grenade here or there but even still even if you do whiff it the fact that you have the chance as a carry as someone trying to get carried to flawless you have a chance to shut down a super is massive i mean it's very very hard to shut down a super even as someone myself who runs shotgun and i run you know, I'm at the highest level, I'm at 1060, it's very, very hard for me to shut down supers. And whenever I'm trying to help carry someone and they throw a suppressor grenade and it happens to hit the super by whatever miracle, I am so elated, so happy because this is such a strong ability and you've just done something very good for the team. Now the next part is going to be catapult lift. This is really, really good if you're using scroll wheel, if you're on mouse and keyboard. If you're not, then just use strafe lift and just, you know, spam jump as much as you can. Um, and we'll go over the exotic that we're going to be using with this. Obviously, we're going with top tree, and we're going to be trying to get this Ward of Dawn. We're going to have this bubble. We can put the bubble down on top of objectives like the power ammo or on top of revives, but the best objective of all is the overtime point. Obviously, you do not want the game to go to the overtime point because that is two minutes, and if you're playing games that often go to the overtime, that's super frustrating to have to wait two minutes every single round. I mean, that just makes for really long games. That's like anywhere from 15 to 20 minute games, and that is just exhausting and not fun to be hiding. But if the enemies force you into that position, if they spawn in and they're hiding with their swords, you know, running away at every cost, they're trying to farm up their supers, fine, let them do that. You put the bubble down on the overtime, you win checkmate. There are obviously some exceptions to this because there are some supers that can shut down the bubble effectively, but even still, if you do it smart and you do it right, you'll put the bubble down, your enemy team will grab all of those orbs, and then you can evacuate the bubble, allowing the enemy to waste their super on the bubble, etc. The bubble is such a strong super and so easy to use, which is why I highly recommend if you're trying to get carried to use this subclass 
and use this exact setup as I've mentioned. Now moving on to weaponry, obviously the, the meta will shift as time goes on, but at the time I'm making this video, the strongest loadout that you could possibly use, in my opinion, would be the Suros Regime is the strongest auto rifle in the game. Very easy to use, you know, you just point and shoot and it fires up, it ramps up. If you miss bullets with this, like if your aim is not extremely good, you're almost rewarded in some ways because the, the gun gets more lethal with time. So the speed up rate goes higher and higher. Use the spinning up section of it right here. We got the spinning up section turned on. Don't use the other one, that one's terrible. Uh, and so you're almost rewarded if you have bad aim in some ways. So this is such a good weapon to use. This is definitely the strongest exotic you can use. And then the next one is gonna be the Felwinter's Lie and you can rotate from having opening shot to Vorpal so that way you can shut down supers. Easily the best shotgun in the game, without a doubt. There's no shotgun that can come close to this shotgun because of that option to swap from opening shot to Vorpal mid-game. So strong. In the power weapon slot, you know, if you're here trying to get carried, uh, I just throw on a sword from PV. It literally has taken spec on it, and I still use this one because uh, I'm not actually going to use the sword. The sword is there. If enemies 3-peak against me, I'm not going to put myself at a disadvantage and not 3-peak against them and just lose. I'm going to have 3-peak so that way I don't get sniped or picked off by them. So just have a sword on just in case, or if you don't want to provoke the enemies to potentially use a sword, start with a grenade launcher so that way you have some decency. And then if you start seeing all the enemies pull out their swords and sit behind corners with hilts, then, then yeah, you can swap over the sword yourself. So this would be probably the strongest build in terms of weaponry. Now moving on to the statistics part. Now this part can be a little bit harder to get because obviously this requires extremely good armor, but you know, you can go to the prismatic recaster and you can farm out some recovery based armor and hopefully get yourself some high recovery armor. The most important stat for crucible is recovery. You want to have hundred recovery ideally. And then the second most important stat, especially if we're going to be playing with the bubble, the second most important stat is definitely going to be intellect. So that way if enemies do hide with swords, etc., you can put down a bubble on them and defend against supers, which it doesn't always have to be on the overtime. For example, if someone has a really strong super on the enemy team, like a Spectral Blades, you can just put a bubble down in place, and when the Spectral Blades comes up to you, it'll be very easy to shut it down with multiple teammates inside the bubble, and almost impossible for the Spectral Blades to actually pop the bubble. So obviously, on my build, I have a perfect build. I got 100 recovery and 100 intellect. You can have something like, you know, 90 recovery and 50 intellect. That's totally fine, but obviously work on getting that as high as you possibly can. And I'm going to go over my armor here and I'm not going to make it too crazy. I'm not going to fill out everything with 10 energy. I'm going to actually just keep it nice and simple for you. So that way you don't get uh, over complicated or over convoluted with some of this stuff. So I'm putting a recovery mod on the helmet and then I'm putting enhanced scatter projectile targeting that comes from the artifact mod. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I'm using an auto rifle and that just helps a little bit. That mod isn't really that important, so don't stress that too much, but it only costs one energy, so you might as well have that on. The gauntlet, I'm using another recovery mod, and then I'm using enhanced auto rifle loader. Now, this is only available for a solar affinity gauntlet, and obviously, because I know I'm using an auto rifle, I'm going to use the solar affinity, so that way I can reload that a little bit faster. The chest piece, I'm using an intellect mod. The secondary mod slot, this is actually another artifact mod, which is enhanced unflinching rifle aim, so this will work well for my auto rifle. And obviously, you don't really need this. I don't really see this affecting you that much, but... You know, it's important to have a mod in that first slot, either recovery, intellect. Discipline can also be extremely good for throwing more and more grenades, and resilience can also be really, really strong. So don't think that it only matters to have recovery and intellect. It does matter to keep these stats up decently too as well, because the more suppressor grenades you throw, the more you're going to be able to keep the enemies out of their supers. And the more resilience you have, the more of those titan walls you can put down, so you can make get those clutch revives, etc. And so that's what I am have for the chest piece. For the boots, the strongest exotic is definitely Dune Marchers, and there's two reasons why. Obviously, if you punch someone, it chains and does damage, which is really nice, but the secondary effect is that you have the ability to have really high mobility, so you can run away and get away from supers and disengage from bad situations, which is really, really important if you're trying to get carried. You don't want to be left behind because me and the other person we're playing with, we will often be you know, rotating away from enemies, especially as they try to run us down with supers. And so you don't want to be using a slow exotic or a non-mobility exotic and simply get left behind as we rotate away. So I highly recommend using Dune Marchers. I use a recovery mod and a shotgun scavenger on here. This only takes up six energy, so it's not too hard to get. And even if you only have the collections roll, it's not that bad. It's definitely still better to use an exotic than to not use an exotic. The last piece is onto the class item. We're going to use a recovery mod and we're going to use pump action. So that way if we get any shotgun kills, it does give us that boost to super energy. Super strong mod there. That's going to use up seven energy slots there. And there are definitely more stronger stuff that you could put on your class item. Like I could put oppressive darkness on this and do a variety of other different builds and stuff. But I wanted to keep this video really simple and really easy. So that way, even if you, if you're a hunter main or warlock main, you're like, man, I really want to get carried, but I know I'm really, really tough to carry inside trials. It's going to be tough for me to make it flawless. If even you could set this build up very easily and very fast on your Titan. So that way you can help me and anyone for that matter that's trying to help carry you. You can help 
them give you the best possible chance of making that successful flawless. Trust me when I say this, I've played tons and tons of trials and sometimes Hunter is really strong, sometimes Warlock is really strong. There's so many different classes that are really strong throughout time. When the Darkness classes come out, I'm sure this will completely throw a whole new twist to everything and there'll probably be a really good strong Darkness based class with Stasis that's just super nasty and maybe that's the one you want to use and maybe it's Hunter, maybe it's Warlock, who knows which one it will be, but time will tell and time will change the meta. But as it stands right now, as the time I'm making this video, the strongest and best class you could possibly make, and if you want to have the best chance of success when getting carried in Trials of Osiris, this is the build, I guarantee you. Thank you all so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you want more content like this, and I'll see you in the next one. Later!